Hello, my name is Dr. Lindsay Marr. I am a professor of civil and environmental engineering at Virginia Tech. I study the airborne transmission of viruses, and over the past 10 years, I have published more than 25 peer-reviewed scientific papers about viruses in the air and on surfaces. I helped write the letter to the World Health Organization, signed by 239 scientists, about airborne transmission of COVID-19. In August, I wrote an op-ed in the New York Times about coronavirus being in the air. Together with other leading scientists, I am in touch with the World Health Organization, the CDC, Dr. Fauci, and members of Congress to update public health officials about our understanding of how the virus is transmitted. With improved understanding, we can figure out the most effective ways to slow the pandemic and save lives, while also carefully reopening the economy and schools. I will briefly explain how COVID-19 is transmitted. There are three possible ways. First, by touching a sick person or an object that has been contaminated with the virus and transferring it to your eyes, nose, or mouth. CDC tells us that this is less important. Second, by large respiratory droplets that fly like mini cannonballs out of a sick person's mouth and land directly in your eyes, nose, or mouth. Third, by breathing in microscopic respiratory droplets called aerosols from the air. Although there has been a lot of emphasis on contaminated surfaces and large droplets, in fact, aerosols are likely to be the most important way that COVID-19 is transmitted. We release hundreds to thousands of aerosols when we breathe and talk. If someone is sick, their aerosols may contain viruses. The aerosols are small enough that they can stay floating in the air for minutes to hours. They're most concentrated near the person who released them. Like cigarette smoke, they don't fall to the ground. They can travel much farther than six feet and can build up in the air of a room if it lacks good ventilation. There is overwhelming evidence that inhalation of the virus is a major route of transmission for COVID-19, as stated at a workshop of the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine, which is one of the world's most prestigious in scientific institutions. There, other experts and I presented evidence based on measurements in hospitals, studies in laboratories, and super spreading events showing that airborne transmission is very important. Although the World Health Organization does not recognize this route of transmission as significant, the CDC now says that inhalation of aerosols is thought to be the main way the virus spreads. Germany and the UK have accepted this as well. This can happen both in close contact situations where it's like being close to a smoker and breathing in their plume of smoke and farther away than six feet because aerosols float in the air and can easily travel across a room. While airborne viruses sound scary in movies, there is no need to panic. Just as we know how to protect ourselves against viruses in water and food, we also know how to protect ourselves against viruses in the air. We do not need to worry about clouds of virus roaming the streets and chasing us around. Rather, it's more mundane situations like eating at a restaurant or meeting with lots of friends and family indoors where we need to pay the most attention. So what can we do to protect ourselves better? First, distancing keeps us out of range of large droplets and out of the most concentrated parts of someone's aerosol plume, just like we wouldn't wanna to be too close to a cigarette smoker. Second, masks help in two ways. They prevent someone who might be infected from spreading lots of viruses into the air. Masks also protect the people who are wearing them from breathing in viruses from the air around them. We need to wear a mask at all times indoors when we're sharing the same air with people beyond our own households. The mask should cover our noses and mouths and should fit tightly without any gaps. Third, we need to pay attention to ventilation. If there is lots of fresh air to dilute the virus, then it can't build up to dangerous levels. This means moving activities outdoors if possible, opening windows and doors, and ensuring that HVAC systems are running with as much outdoor air rather than recirculated air as possible. 
one way to gauge ventilation is to measure carbon dioxide or CO2, which humans exhale. This indicates whether ventilation is good in a space or not. Aim for a level below 800 parts per million and the lower the better. Good filtration also helps remove viruses from the air. You can upgrade the filters in an HVAC system and add portable HEPA air cleaners if possible. There's even a cheap way to make a good air cleaner by taping a rectangular HVAC filter rated MERV 13 or higher to the back of a box fan. Fourth, avoid crowds to reduce the chances of being around someone who is infected. Fifth, talk quietly and minimize things like singing and cheering as loud vocalization produces a lot more aerosols than just breathing. Thank you for watching and stay healthy.